history. Our guest tonight has a PhD in change management. He's had an illustrious career in accounting, in business, and also in research and the applied sciences. Dr. Cesar Mwangi has allowed life and experiences in business to take him into what many would see as uncharted waters. And this is into areas of dealing with social ethics, corporate ethics and morality. Our captain of industry today is the managing director of Sassini Limited, Dr. Caesar Mwangi. Right. Now we know that culture is fluid, it's not yes, static, yes, and as yes, the world yes. changes, yes. these rural economies have to change as yes, well. Yes. You know, but there's just something that bothers me right. and bothers many looking at the dichotomies in our society. Yes. And that is, as we talk about commercializing agriculture, where right. are women in this equation? Because of the 70% of people who work in rural areas, right, right. the majority are women. Yes. And yet, across many African countries, yeah. women, because of patriarchy and culture, yeah. cannot own land. Right. So how do we even talk about modernizing the agricultural economy if we can't even talk about land rights for women? Yes. Um, well, the conversation about uh, rights of women has increasingly become vocal, as you're aware, because this is a question, I think this is a problem that has been identified as a source of a lot of great concern. Um, and it's true, women are really the backbone of, 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 of agricultural sector. Uh, somehow they, they are there, they are working, they are taking care of their families. And um, in fact, you find that uh, men migrate to urban areas and leave the women in the rural areas. And yet the men are the ones who own the land in the rural areas. And, and, and this begs the question about really who, who, whether women should actually have some greater ownership. Um, and I think, unfortunately, uh, this question would not arise if there was much greater responsibility from the men in terms of taking care of their families. In, in great honesty, I think this is the biggest challenge has been that responsibility of, of sharing the fruits of the land, the fruits of the family labor equally between the man, the woman, the, the children, and, and, and men taking responsibility and saying, this is ours, it's not mine. Yeah. Okay. Now there is them and us syndrome that has developed because many men have been a little bit rather irresponsible in this mm. regard. And they've somehow left the women to fend for themselves. Yeah. Some have disappeared in urban areas and taken up second, third wives, etc., <laughs> and abandoned their homes. Yeah. You see, so it's, it's a bit more of a social issue which boils down to individual choices that have been made that have ended up uh, disadvantaging women to a larger degree. You speak quite passionately about yeah. this issue and earlier on you'd mentioned the fact that as we modernize, yeah. we're beginning to see a disintegration in family values. Yes. And that takes me into another realm of right. your existence. And this right. is the work that you do with Family Network yes. International. Yes. Um, trying to reinvigorate a debate about uh, family values, yes, morality. Yes, yes. As Africa gets richer right. because our economies are growing, right. there is a concern that we are losing the very essence right. of our being. Right. We're losing a sense right. of morality. Is right. that a fair right. assessment? Yes. I think um, it's a fair assessment. And um, in fact, history has shown, research has shown, that as societies become more developed, uh, there's a tendency to lose those basic values of fraternity, of concern for others. Uh, the African culture has been very strong on this, and maybe this, as, as, the, African, uh, as the African countries uh, develop, that this is certainly getting lost. Uh, the urban communities have not been having those strong social ties that they've had, and the rural areas generally still maintain those ties. Uh, there's a lot of generosity uh, even in the rural areas, even if people don't have too much. And the question is, are we better off because we have more or are we better off because we are better people and we have concern for others? Mm. Uh, but capitalism per se somehow um, ingrains the issue of individualism. Okay? And we have to be very careful as we get increasingly better off that we don't become increasingly individualistic. Yeah. And as we become individualistic, we then seem to forget the weaker members of society mm. and our, our, our need to carry them along. Mm. And we end up in some sort of rat race whereby we are ahead of everybody else and we are glad because I am ahead of everybody else and you think of I rather than we and rather than the community. Mm -hmm. Now this is a tendency that we all fall into uh, and actually the commercial interests favor this tendency because it, uh, the, the commercial interests are throwing products all the time to those with the money. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're getting attracted to those adverts and we look good, or mm. people look good on the adverts if they can own certain vehicles, if they can live in certain houses, mm. which sometimes you don't need. <laughs> so somehow we've got to balance this. 
But it what all, do you reckon we ought to do? What's we, the balance? It, 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 we need to be self-aware as individuals. We need to be self-aware. One, I always speak in a very basic terms and say, we can only sleep in one bed at a time. <laughs> <laughs> we can only wear one pair of shoes at a time. You can only wear one suit at a time. So the, it doesn't make sense to have uh, 3,000 pairs of shoes. Yeah. You understand? Um, and, uh, you know, you need to learn to share a little bit of the bountiful blessings that you have uh, with those maybe who are less fortunate than yourselves. I think you're uh, starting to echo the sentiments uh, yeah. of Barack Obama yeah. as he was uh, dealing with issues of uh, tax relief and his approach to tax, yes. his approach on issues such as corporate greed yes. and yes. the regulation of banks. Yes. Yes. He's, he's speaking to all these issues about yeah. capitalism, conspicuous consumption, yes. and how we got into the credit crisis. And for exactly. him, there's a direct correlation. This takes me beyond the question of society yeah. and eroding values, yeah. but issues of corporate greed right. and to, to the extent to which Africa is susceptible exactly. to some of the things that we've seen happening internationally. Very important aspect, um, corporate governance, uh, the issue of, of greed, you know, this is one of the biggest uh, problems. And, and, and greed is a vice that each human being has a tendency to, and you, we need to control it. Uh, Africa has suffered very much because those that have been in power, unfortunately, have used that power to their individual advantages. And they've forgotten the majority of the people who actually put them in power. And it has been a use, dump, and abuse kind of uh, situation that, that many African countries have been facing. So we've had a lack of, of genuine leadership which is concerned about the greater good, okay, or the common good. Mm. And it is about the individual good. And we have it uh, to the extent that people think of their own individual good plus the good of those who support them, and that is my people syndrome. Mm. Understand? And that's when you find a lot of leaders uh, using my people and the tribe that I belong to as my vehicle to the next uh, level in power mm. and which other people can we negotiate with mm. so that we can... Uh, share the benefits at the exclusion of others, mm. okay? And this is what ends up causing a lot of dissatisfaction, uh, probably coup d'etats, a lot of uh, crime levels increasing because people feel neglected, uh, people feel abandoned by their leaders, mm. and their leaders are wallowing in opulence while there's a sea of poverty all around. Right. Okay, now we need to change this. Surely we need to change this. And um, even in the work of corporate governance, as a company, for example, we, 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 we feel we have a big responsibility in the rural areas we work in. And we provide uh, medical facilities, we provide schooling facilities mm -hmm. for the communities there. Uh, because we feel this is, is, is our contribution to those communities. Mm -hmm. It will reduce the inequalities. In fact, inequality is a very huge problem. Mm -hmm. And it's driven a lot by greed mm -hmm. and by exclusion of the majority. Mm -hmm. If we can reduce inequalities, then you can find that there'll be much more harmony in society. One of the questions I've asked um, yeah. uh, leaders yeah. across Africa is how we can bridge the disconnect between corporate standards, ethics, and governance, yeah. and political standards of accountability right. and governance, because somewhere we need convergence right. of these values. Right, right. You can't have business leaders speaking about right. morality in this yes, light, yes. and political leaders yes. seemingly oblivious. Right. I think, um, in fact, in this country, for example, in Kenya, for example, this question has arisen. We as business are clear that we need ethics, we need less corruption, we need for our businesses to thrive, we need to ensure that we, 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 we lock out corruption. We, we are here as custodians of the shareholders, for example. It means we've been entrusted by the shareholders with their wealth. And we've got to multiply that wealth for the shareholders. And any form of corruption is, is depleting that, uh, that wealth. Mm. And we are betraying the trust that we have if we engage in corruption. Now, our leaders need to understand that, that they are custodians of the nation's wealth. They're custodians of the nation's resources. Okay. Now, in this country, for example, there's a very good engagement between what we call the, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, which is the umbrella body for the business, and the government. And we've got what we call the Prime Minister's Roundtable, mm -hmm. where the Prime Minister comes and sits down and listens to what business is saying. Mm -hmm. And this, we feel, is a way of bridging that gap. And we hope this can continue, because we then express mm -hmm. our concerns, and the Prime Minister listens, the ministers are there, they listen, mm -hmm. and we engage them on these issues, because we've got to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. There's no way that we can see as you said, dichotomy, where one has certain values and another mm. has different values. We all suffer in the process. Yeah. Yeah. What are the values that Dr. Caesar Mwanga espouses right. as a man, as a leader? Okay. One, as I mentioned, uh, one, I, I believe that um, 
as a leader, we are, we are very privileged because it's not everybody who gets that opportunity. An opportunity to lead is a privilege, which is literally given to a few. <laughs> so first of all, we must appreciate it as a privilege. It's not a right. There are many others who can take up these positions and, and, and have the responsibility uh, in a public company like we have here. Uh, but having given that responsibility, I, I carry it with much humility eh? as, as much as possible because I realize I've been entrusted by 8,000 shareholders and I, I, I need to, to be trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is really to be trustworthy. My word is my bond. Mm -hmm. You understand? And this is, I think, something very important mm -hmm. that I do not want to betray that trust and I need to be trustworthy. And I think any leader in any position needs to be trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, for me is one of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. And secondly, which we've been trying to push here, is that, um, yes, we may be in privileged positions uh, where we, we, we control resources, we, we, we can control people, etc. But we must realize we don't do things on our own. Mm. You understand? The people we work with are as important to us as ourselves, and therefore teamwork, okay? And respecting everybody as an important team player. Mm. The security guard downstairs who lets you in is a very important person, very critical. He's no lesser than myself. If he's not there, we do not know who is going to come into this building. Mm. Okay? The person who serves us a cup of tea is very important. When he's not there, we don't get that cup of tea. Yeah. The person who cleans uh, the office is a very important person. We're able to work in clean offices because of those people. Mm. So we also must appreciate mm. each and every person. Mm. So respect, appreciation, yeah. okay? trustworthiness, I think those are very important to me as a person. And I think that's <laughs> a poignant place at which to leave it. Yeah. The views of Dr. Cesar Mwangi, the Managing Director of Sini yes. Limited. Yes. Uh, thank you for being our Captain of Industry tonight. Thank you very much. And thank you for taking the conversation beyond just management strategies that others can draw from. Certainly. But the, the values, the integrity of leadership. This is the leadership. foundation. This is the foundation of leadership. The values without them, we are nothing. Eh? We can have the best constitutions, we can have the best uh, company uh, mission statements, right. but if we don't have the values, we are nothing. Yeah. Thank you so much to Thank you, Dr. Cesar Mwangi, Managing yes. Director of Sassini Limited, yeah. our captain of industry tonight, really emphasizing the need to connect the corporate values to the ethics of humanity. And again, reiterating what so many of our captains of industry from East Africa have emphasized, the need for humility in leadership, recognizing the importance of everybody across the production chain, because that's where the real value is added. That's being captains of industry from Nairobi, Kenya.